That'd be great. Congregation, please rise. The Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After he had said this, Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some Pharisees in the crowd said, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. Jesus answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to raise your palms. Lord, bless these parade palms, O God of celebration. May they remind us of the simple joys of living. May we remember the excitement that comes with following Christ. Bless these protest palms, O God of justice. May they remind us that empire is not a thing of the past. May they make us bold and brave to stand against injustice. Bless these funeral palms, O God of comfort. May they remind us of the road that lies ahead. May they encourage us in times of grief and pain. We give you thanks for the parade, the protest, and the processional palm. Guide our steps through this holiest of weeks as we cry together, Hosanna, 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 and grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace in the name of Christ. Amen. Lips of 
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the children forward for the children's message. Good morning. Good morning, Pastor Paul. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> it's so great to have all of you guys up here today. Can anybody tell me what looks a little weird today? There are a bunch of plants everywhere. Anybody know what kind of plants those are? Palms, right. And what are some of us holding in our hands? Palm branches. And does anybody know why we have palm branches? Um, palm Sunday. Palm Sunday and your bread. Right, there's red around, right? Because it's a special day. Exactly. Good job, guys. Way to be observant. Yeah, we have palms because it's Palm Sunday. It's the beginning of the time. It's called Holy Week. Can everybody say that with me? Holy Week. Good job. And Holy Week is different than every other week of the church year because in this week, from Sunday to Sunday, we're going through the same stuff that Jesus went through. So on Palm Sunday, what were people doing around Jesus? Waving their palms. Can I have some help out there from the congregation? Here we go. Look. Look at all those palms waving. That's right. People waving their palms. And then on Maundy Thursday which is this coming Thursday, Jesus and his disciples had the Last Supper and they shared communion for the very first time. And then on Good Friday, Jesus dies on the cross and we remember that on Good Friday. And then what happened a week from today, the next Sunday? He come back. He come back, right. What, on Easter, very good. Oh my goodness, you guys are so with it today. Right, next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Jesus 
came back. He was alive again forever. And because of that, because Jesus died for us and rose again, we can know that Jesus loves us always. Not just some of the time, not just some people back then, but all of us all the time. And how cool is that? It's pretty cool. It is. It's great. So, as we celebrate today with Palm Sunday, and we are going to hear the story of what happened during the week, we remember all that Jesus did for us, and we are thanked because God began this holy week. We pray that you would be with us and help us to remember you every day this week, remembering all the things that you did during that special week in your life where you came into Jerusalem, where you died, and you rose again. Help us to look forward to next Sunday to Easter. Amen. Thanks so much for coming up. You are welcome to head with Miss Amanda to Jam Time.
It's easy for us sometimes to divide somehow Palm Sunday from the rest of the Passion. To think about this is celebration and that is this difficult suffering, but for Jesus, it was all part of the same thing. Because as he entered into Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday, with the crowds waving palms and placing their cloaks on the road so that the donkey had a carpet to walk on, he knew, he knew what was going to happen, that that same crowd would not a week later be calling for his death, his crucifixion. And still, Jesus followed, followed that path into Jerusalem, followed the course that led to the cross and the tomb. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and he is, his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going to but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them would be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me, a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon the Risen, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Peter said to him, He said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. He said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise a bag, and the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me, and he was counted among the laws. And indeed, what is written about me is being they said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him, 
and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it for the kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay a hand on me, but this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him to the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also is with us. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else upon seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, then, about an hour later, still another kept insisting. Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, he replied, If I tell you, you will not believe, and if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether this man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see Jesus for a long time, because he had heard about him, and he was hoping to see him perform some sign. Herod questioned Jesus at some length, 
But Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then put Herod put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who was put in prison for insurrection and murder. And he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him. Among them were women who had been beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there kept deriding him, saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, You do not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed have been condemned justly, as we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Congregation, please rise. It was now about noon, 
and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed. They saw the tomb and how his body had been laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. several announcements for us to share. Thanks to your generosity, the Ukrainian Easter love boxes are sold out. And so we are um, looking forward to making a substantial donation in support of Ukrainian refugees. Um, though the boxes are sold out, you can still donate to that cause if you just write Ukrainian love boxes on the memo line of your check. These are the final days for our Lenten collection for our mission partner congregation, Redeemer in Toledo. We've been collecting diapers, toothbrushes, toothpaste, and deodorant, for which there's been a box downstairs by the elevator. Additionally, we've been collecting $10 gift cards for Kroger or Walmart that can be placed in the offering plate so that those who are taking advantage of the food pantry at Redeemer can purchase things that are not offered there. This Maundy Thursday, we are once again gathering white or black tube socks for homeless shelters. You can bring them in advance this week or bring them to the Maundy Thursday service itself. There'll be a basket up here and a point in the service when you can bring them forward. If you haven't started it already, this would be an opportune time to begin passing the pew pad. <laughs> As we continue to return to more open worship, we're looking for more assisting ministers and lectors, ushers, greeters, and acolytes. Please contact the office or use the links in your Z-Blast or Trifold if you're interested in participating. This coming Saturday from nine to noon will be the Zor Community Easter Egg Hunt at Woodlands Park. We are grateful that after a two-year hiatus 
we are once again able to go out and share the love of Jesus in this joyful way with the community. We continue to lift up a number of folks in our congregation. Ralph Henry, Mike Besley, Vivian Corbin, Sandy Pollock, Sandy Pinert, Rodney Clark, and Janelle Thurm, who is recovering from surgery. And we lift up the family and friends of Betty Orndorff, whose memorial service was on Tuesday. The family and friends of Claire Ackerman's mom, who died this last week. And the family and friends of Dave Sudman, who passed into the arms of the Lord on Monday. For all of them, we pray for God's comfort and strength for the days ahead. We rise as we join together in confessing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us unflinching servants of the gospel. Deliver us from hardship as we confront the foes of injustice and practice radical compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the earth and all its inhabitants created in love, train us to recognize your divine goodness in the world around us. Rouse in us a reverence for creation that we take greater care of its resources. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those in positions of authority called to lead with integrity and compassion, Supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenged with new ideas. Deliver them from fear that limits imagination and impedes justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, waiting expectantly for mercy and consolation, accompany those who feel abandoned or betrayed. Defend those who are wrongly accused and embrace those who are incarcerated or detained. Heal those who are ill, especially Ralph, Mike, Vivian, Sandy, Rodney, Sandy, and Janelle, and those who we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Christians around the world preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross, reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. Lead us all from death to life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, especially Dave and Betty and Jody, who were commended into your hands. Remember us when you come into your kingdom and prepare a place for each of us with you in paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share a sign of peace with one another.
congregation, please rise. Extravagant God, you've blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in this Holy Supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together in singing the Lord's Prayer. receive at his table. For communion distribution, we're going to be beginning at the back pews. You'll make your way down the center aisle. You'll receive the bread. And then on either side of the aisle from the trays, you'll receive the red wine on the outside rings of the trays or the white grape juice on the center ring. And then after dropping off your empty cup, return back to your seats by way of the side aisles. Come, for all is ready. 
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. You are the children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, Almighty God bless you this day and always. Amen. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, fill you with every spiritual blessing. Amen. May the God of faithfulness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join together in our sending hymn, On My Heart, Imprint Your Image.